Having a desk job sitting for eight hours a day or more is as bad for your health as smoking and being obese. It's true, but there is a remedy. We're going to talk about that today. I feel like we uh, we compare everything to smoking if we want to scare people. That's right. Because that's, yeah. everybody knows how it's bad it is. the benchmark right there. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, but I looked this up. Um, if you sit for six to eight hours a day, which is nowadays it's a, a good amount of people. Most yeah. people... This is what you do for work as you sit. What we is the percentage of that? Could you look that up, Doug? I, I'm curious of what percentage of people sit six to eight hours a day and work. Yes. Um, Probably, but, a, mu obviously, much larger. But the data on that is crazy. So first off, it's as bad for your health as smoking, as being a regular smoker mm -hmm. and being obese. It affects your mental health. So it's, core, it's connected to poor mental health, significantly worse mental health. It's connected to poor metabolic health, so diabetes, heart disease cancer. And there's two ways you could remedy this. One of them is far more realistic than the other. So the first way that you can remedy this is you could be have intense activity 30 minutes every single day at least. So every single day, a 30 minute to an hour hard workout is what they say. Now, the problem with that is it's just not, it's just not realistic. Yeah. Most people aren't going to do that. You guys know that. Like It's very hard to get people to work out two days a week consistently, let alone every single day. The other way is to build muscle. A lot of people don't realize this, but muscle is so protective against being sedentary because, uh, precisely because it dramatically improves your metabolic health. So even though you're sitting down all day long, if you have strong muscle that you've built, you're going to have good insulin sensitivity. You're going to have a faster metabolism. You are going to maintain a certain level of mobility and building muscle doesn't require uh, every Helps day to workers. counter some of those negative That's right. effects. It's sitting, extremely yeah. protective. Um, and, and the data on that is pretty clear as well. When you see studies on people who have like dramatic injuries or surgeries, mm -hmm. one of the uh, data points that will, that will correlate or connect to success is muscle mass. Mm -hmm. So like, oh, you got super sick. You were in the hospital for three months. Your odds of dying are this, or your odds of getting really you know worse are this. But if you have a lot of muscle significantly better um, because it's just having it on your body is protective. Yeah. Can we, can we simplify what we mean by strength training gives you uh, better metabolic health? I think that overcomplicates something that I think is relatively simply uh, simple to understand because I was communicating this in, in my series and I had a lot of questions ar around like, what do we mean? What do we mean exactly by that? And I always like to use the, like the, uh, like gas tank analogy of like you're, when we, when we eat food, it, the carbohydrates turn and convert over into glucose glycogen, you get stored in your, in, you have a gas tank and your gas tank looks like this is your fuel reserve to run uh, your body runs on that, the energy that it runs on. Right. And then your, all your muscle bellies are giant gas tanks too. So when you have these extra carbohydrates, they go and they fill all these muscle bellies up. Now, when we overfill them and we don't do any activity, that's called what we call like the overspillage and that gets stored as body fat. Right. And the more we build muscle, the bigger we make these gas tanks, which gives you more metabolic flexibility in right. a sense. So it allows a person, so if a person goes out and puts on five pounds of their muscle and they have kind of a sedentary job, well, what's, what's so metabolically advantageous is they now have larger gas tanks. So when they eat out of bounds or they eat a little extra more food than what they needed because they have plenty of fuel already in them and they eat a little more, it goes to filling those reserves up versus overspilling and storing his body fat. Yes. So um, building muscle is the fastest, most effective way to improve insulin sensitivity, which is connected to what you're saying, right? So insulin gets released because you've got you know sugar in your blood and that insulin signals your body to store those carbohydrates, uh, hopefully is glycogen and not again, like it doesn't have anywhere to go. Right. And it turns into body fat. Um, when you're building muscle, it's your muscle, your body's very sensitive to insulin. A little bit of insulin does a good job. When you're not building muscle, when your muscles are, are atrophied or weak or you're not active, uh, your body starts to become less sensitive or less responsive to insulin. This is what they, this is known as insulin uh, insensitivity or insulin resistance. 
This is what leads to things like diabetes. Now, by the way, before you get diabetes, there is a period of time where you're you're becoming less and less sensitive to insulin. You're starting to become metabolically right. less healthy. It's so that means your body is releasing insulin and it doesn't react. It's like your, your, your body sees it, doesn't do anything. You need to release even more, even more, even more just to make that uh, effect. And this affects everything down to the mitochondrial level. These are the, mm -hmm. the, the, the energy sources of each cell. So you want to be very metabolically healthy so that when you eat food, when you sit for a long period of time, your body doesn't go into this like terrible place. Not and to mention your brain cognition like uh, diminishes a bit. Like I, there was a related study. I think I remember like they did in Iowa schools and Dr. Ed Thomas kind of brought it up of just like interrupting this long periods of sitting with getting up and like doing these frequent movement patterns to, uh, you know, get the brain to, to fire more optimally. Insulin resistance um, is strongly connected to poor cognitive function, dementia, Alzheimer's. Researchers sometimes refer to uh, neurodegenerative disorders like dementia and Alzheimer's as type three type diabetes, mm -hmm. where the brain has now become, uh, it, it doesn't utilize glucose very well. It's not able to use energy sources very well. So now you have a, a brain that needs energy and it's not using it well. So then it becomes dysfunctional. It doesn't work very well. Strength training offsets that. And the value, the beauty of strength training is it do, you don't need to do a lot of it. So if the average person lifted or did strength training twice a week, they would get tremendous protective effects mm -hmm. versus the other option, which is get up and move for an hour a day, uh, which, you know, that's good. There's nothing, in fact, there's nothing wrong with that. I think that would be great. But I've trained enough people to know that that's unrealistic. The average yeah. person is not going to schedule an hour workout every single day. They're just not. Well, and there's also the obvious protective effects of it in terms of like protecting your vital mm -hmm. organs, like, you know, get, providing you strength. There was a story you had on your DMs, Adam, right? About somebody. Uh, oh, yeah. So I, I told you guys off air. I didn't share this on the show, but I, I told the guys off air that recently I had uh, one of my neighbors um, had guest in from out of town. And the guests were talking to them about this podcast they listened to. And the neighbor's like, are you talking about Adam? And the guest was like, yeah, you know who that is? And he's like, he walked outside, he points to my house. So they freak out. He calls, he messages me and says, hey, could I have you come over? Which, by the way, now my whole neighborhood's like up in arms about mm -hmm. this. I live in like an older neighborhood, so not everybody kind of knows what we do. Like, of course, I've told them like, oh, yeah, we have this fitness media company, but I don't like play it all up or make mm. a big deal about it. But now like everybody's talking in the neighborhood because this all happened. Anyways, these neighbors uh, hit me up. They asked me to come over. I, I, I introduced myself. I mean, uh, Deborah and Ed, I believe uh, were their names and uh, incredibly nice people. Been listening to the show for like six years. Um, I hooked them up with a bunch of cool stuff and everything that like I had a package sent to them and everything. And uh, literally, this was just, what, a week ago? I got an email two days ago that uh, I had just met him, too. And they were, they, uh, I think he was, he's in his late 50s, her husband, um, and had been following MAPS programs or that. He got kicked and bucked off a mule and literally was hot, like metaflighted out. Oh, wow. wow. And the doctor told him that had he not had as much muscle, protective muscle on his body, that he could have easily been paralyzed or died. Wow. That's how bad the accident was and how severe it was. And then, and how much uh, the muscle protected that from him and literally told him that. that was, they sent me like this long old email. I thought, oh my God, that's so crazy. I just met them last that's week. Just it's, it's, it's very pr uh, protective, functional, um, active tissue. It's an organ that you can flex that moves your body. Um, and again, sitting down all day long, if you don't offset that, that position, by strengthening your muscles in supportive ways or in ways that support you differently than just sitting, mm -hmm. you actually start to form into your chair, okay? So if you're in a position for a long period of time, over time, your muscles in your body starts to hold you in that position because that's where you're most comfortable and that's where your body feels safest. And because you don't move outside of that very often, your body will actually start to prevent you from moving too far outside of it yeah. as a protective mechanism. And this is why people's posture over the years will get worse and worse and worse and worse and why they start to walk worse and worse and move differently over time. Now, strength training, because it's so targeted, right? Because I can strengthen my body in opposing directions and I can, I can specifically strengthen my body in ways that it needs to be strengthened. Again, it's individualized. Yeah. I can offset all the, all the issues that come from not moving. Yeah. So it's a very, it's like the, the perfect counter to being sedentary, which again, Doug looked it up. 
majority of Americans are considered uh, sit, will sit for six and a half hours or more a day. A majority. You know, well, eight, it's 25% or of eight over hours or eight hours a day. That's crazy. This is why I always found it too. I remember, I can't remember what study or article I read in my early 20s when I just started uh, as a personal trainer. And uh, we used to have this thing where you fill out and you ask the client, like, would you consider yourself sedentary, like mildly active, active or athletic, oh, yeah. right? And like nobody puts yeah, themselves nobody as puts sedentary. Yeah, nobody there? puts sedentary. Even sedentary <laughs> people would put with like, oh, mildly active or with yeah. that because they count their walk they do occasionally or whatever it is that they do. And I remember reading this article they done or a study. I can't remember if it was an article or a study, but they had done this where they took the average person who trains, okay, works out in a gym for an hour, seven days a week, is still considered sedentary. That's right. Because mm -hmm. even in that hour time- 90 of, some percent uh, of the time, they're not doing anything. It's still, it's still not enough to counter all the inactivity right. to consider yourself an active person or most certainly not an athlete and oh, yeah. everybody. So it was, I remember reading that, learning that, and I remember that, that that questionnaire was part of how we plugged in the formula to kick off people's calories and macros and I, I, I remember that too. Yeah. On where they should be. And I remember, oh my God, I've been He's inputting these people off. so off because yeah, I take them for their word. And if they told me they worked out occasionally and they considered themselves an active person, I'm more active. I remember active, I, you know? did, I had clients yeah, who were the body bug those. and would measure their activity and I'd pull up their chart. And I'd look at their day. You look at a flat line. You'd yeah. see a spike. <laughs> you'd see yeah. a spike One for the spike. workout. Yeah. And then nothing. Yeah. And then I realized for myself, like we're definitely sedentary now. Now that we started doing this. I know. We are. That's hard to admit. I mean, I work out uh, most days. Yeah. Sedentary still. still. If I had to fill out a form, it would be sedentary because we're doing this. I mean, Justin said, it, Justin said it the other day about me and I, I don't disagree with him. Uh, I attribute a lot of what's going on with me with the injuries I've been battling on this journey back to just that. I'm so used to having a job, a profession where, you know, even if, even when I'm not working hard or working out, I'm bending over, picking weights, I'm moving in the yeah. transverse plane. Like I'm, I'm doing these movements and I'm staying connected and active way more. And it just, you know, I did does even me. Okay. It doesn't dawn on me. Like, Oh my God, I'm neglecting that so much for so long now. Now I've been doing this shit. We've been doing this for almost 10 years now. Yeah that like I, I there's so much i have to regress myself like a client and make sure i address all those things to bolster uh my joints and strength and stability before i'm pushing the levers to build all this muscle yep, yeah. and, and i'm paying for it you know i had this it, like i had this thought um I, I told you guys a long time ago i was like after college i was considering uh becoming a chiropractor or a physical therapist i was kind of like toggling between the two and uh, cause I did get some benefit when I go to the chiropractor cause I had a lot of like impact injury stuff and like, you know, a lot of alignment things because of, you know, my ribs and my vertebrae and all that kind of stuff. But uh, it, it never like got better. Like it, it was just very temporary and I was always frustrated with that. And then I started actually working on mobility and working on, uh, you know, just getting stronger. And I'm like, it's just muscle. It's muscle and CNS. Like for the most part, if you just address, you know, that specifically, a lot of these issues and pains and things people experience and not moving in those uh, different planes of motion and, and expressing that and, and strengthening those muscles to, to do their job, you know, like it, it's just crazy to me that like we have all these other kind of like segmented parts of, of, you know, health and, and, uh, trying to address like pain specifically. And it's like, dude, so much of it is, is just because you're not strong. Yeah. yeah. Your, your central nervous system, uh, obviously controls your, all your functions. And if it, if it senses that a particular movement is too risky, it will limit your body so that you can't or you don't move in that particular way. And then what happens is if you allow that to happen, then you start to lose more range of motion because then your body goes, uh-oh, now even what we're doing yep. feels a little risky. Let's limit it even let's, more. Yeah, compress. Let's limit it even more. Let's leave it. And so what that looks like is muscles being tight, okay? Muscles tightening up and holding you in position. So now you seem inflexible. You seem like you can't move in a particular way. And now it feels good when you get an adjustment or you stretch, because what you're doing essentially, like when, when chiropractors do, do an adjustment, what they're doing is they're articulating small joints that you normally weren't able to move. And what that does is it kind of stretches the temporarily 
the connective tissue, what's in between or the muscles around it. And you get relief. And the reason why you get relief is when you stretch a muscle, especially if you hold a muscle, it tells the CNS to relax. So the reason why you go to touch your toes and you can't touch your toes, but if you hold the stretch for two minutes, all of a sudden you can touch your toes. Your hamstrings didn't just autumn, all of a sudden, you know, elongate. Your yeah. central nervous system relaxed. started to relax its grip on that on that muscle. And that's a temporary mm-hmm. effect. But what you want to do is strengthen your body in a way to where it feels safe and it feels stable. And then you allows you to move in, in different ways. And this is, again, this is why, as this is the, the number one reason why, as people age, they lose function because they stop moving in particular ways because, ooh, that hurts, better stop doing that. Then you lose that, and then you lose a little more, and then you stop moving that way, and you lose a little more, and your body starts to shape and change to the point where, oh, I used to be able to squat. I used to be able to do this. Now I can't do those movements anymore. Yeah, Strength training's great. Uh, and look, if, when, you, when you meet or talk to, or if you were to just look at the best correctional exercise specialists in the world, physical therapists, people that do rehab, their primary tool is strength training. The primary yeah. tool that they use the good ones. to yeah. rehab is strength training. Now, it doesn't look like barbells and dumbbells half the time because it's rehab, but make no mistake, it's strength training. It's either isometrics or it's a band yeah, or it's dance. body weight or you're pushing against something. But what you're trying to do is, is strengthen your body so the central nervous system doesn't feel like it needs to stay so tight and, and not move in a particular way. And when that happens... This is when you hurt yourself. You tear something or, you know, like, you, like you've like experienced. <laughs> yeah, I know it's like, <laughs> like if you want to see an example of what we're talking about, right? You can see you can see the muscle pull yesterday and then you can see the workout that I'll be doing now going forward. So I got, I got something for rehab you. Rehab stuff. I've yeah. been thinking about it, Adam, because this is now like the, the, the second third, or third muscle. Third, third time. Third, okay. Third, third time in less than three months. So two things that I think you, you that we should do besides the obvious, which is like, you know, mobility, work on function. Like mm-hmm. that's the cornerstone, right? Right. You have to do that. Yeah. Hey, sorry to interrupt. Look, I have a free guide that teaches you how to lose fat in three steps, just three steps that will burn the most amount of body fat and help keep it off. This guide is totally free. We're giving it to everybody right now. If you want it, click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. The other things are, I think, uh, be religious about the red light therapy because that's going to encourage uh, the the building and rebuilding of connective tissue. Yep. Um, and there may be some some weakness there with connective tissue, or maybe some of the 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 actin in the muscle fibers themselves. So I'll tell you what I'm yeah. doing in, in the audience, what I'm doing, and you can you can add to it if you feel the need to, or what uh, I I think is probably valuable, especially since it's in, in in my hamstring. So I stand in front of really close to the red light, and then what I'll do is I'll take I'll hinge yeah, over to the in range of perfect. motion. And I just kind of I grip my feet on the floor, contract everything, and kind of try and while like, you're doing I, red light. Yep, perfect. Right mm-hmm. in front of the red light, and so which is kind of combining some of the stuff that Brink and I. Did the uh, people at Juve tell you to do that? No, that's Brink. Yeah, he told you to yeah. move in front of the red light. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Juve, brilliant. Juve, well, Juve, I shouldn't say that. I I know the benefits of Juve when it comes. I've been using it with all the inj- other injuries, so I understand the benefits of of that on the rehab part. Brink was giving me the movements. I just figured that's a per- if I got to practice these movements throughout the day anyways it's better that i probably do it in front of the red light and, yeah. yeah do you know why it's even better besides the time because you're, what you're doing you're saving time but i th- you think you're gonna make the red light more effective i'm hoping that because would- you're sending a signal while stretching and activating which is going to make the 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 muscle cells more receptive yeah. more receptive to um remodeling right? and then you add in i'm i'm back to i'm also using the the tb 500 and then the uh bpc, BPC 157 be most, be most consistent with the tb 500 really so you think that the, yeah, just the anti-inflammatory not, stuff no so they're both anti-inflammatory but um oh, i didn't really i didn't know that bpc is technically uh anti-inflammatory they both also. have anti-inflammatory effects they're not like that's not their primary function but they do uh they do i thought okay so you need to you need to school me then on this because i my understanding was the thymus and beta 500 is primarily for systemic inflate in, inflammation and then the TB or then the BPC 157 is for reparative re- repairing tissue so BPC and- will help with connective tissue uh regeneration right right TB 500 or thymus and beta both generally the same thing uh work on the actin of the muscle fibers so they'll actually help your muscle fibers 
heal faster. Oh. And because these are muscle tear, they don't seem to be, you're not connecting, like, you're not hurting your- No, no, this is definitely These aren't muscle. ligaments and tendons. No. These are muscle. Yeah. So I would go T, I would go with the TB5 as consistent as possible. Okay, well, that's good to know. Yeah. And then, yeah. okay, so I actually, somebody asked me on my story last night when I was talking to them about uh, BPC-157 and, and thymus and beta. Yeah, is there a, I don't ever remember reading or hearing a protocol on I need to cycle off. Can I take indefinitely? Like, although I don't need it indefinitely. I mean, I'll take it until I'm healed. Is there, am I, am, is, it, is there a problem with me taking it? Say, cause I've been taking it quite a bit for the last couple months. No, not with the, I know that Dr. Seeds is like BPC. You just take it all the time. Yeah. I would check with thymus and beta. Um, I don't know if you didn't get any down regulation. Like if it becomes less, you know, effective over time. Right. But because they're natural peptides, I don't think so. Yeah. It, it, because the I body, didn't think so either, but I I said that I would I'd find yeah. out because I was like, you know what? I don't know. By the way, the we just, so Juve, we mentioned Juve, and then the, uh, the the peptides are from our partners at MP Hormones. Both of those are doing Black Friday like craziness. I know. Everybody's got cool. Mm -hmm. I know. So Juve, I know this from them being partners for years. They don't do a lot of like discounts and deals on the lights. And I, I know. Yeah. And. Only on Black Friday do they have this massive deal, and I I think yeah. I read the uh, email from Katrina that they have some of the lights up to a thousand dollars off. off. Yes. So what? huge discounts! Wow, yeah. uh, through Juve right now for yeah. Black Friday. Is and that then, live or is it not until Black Friday? Is no, that it's li it's live right now. Oh, then, it's live. And then, yeah. the, and then the MP hormones. Doug just had the the the, the sales up for. Let's see. Uh, yeah, thirty five percent off BPC and TB five hundred. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah, oh, those yeah. are the, but I would be super consistent with those, <clears throat> uh, especially the I am. I'm shooting them right into the hamstring right yeah. now. So that's what I'm what I've been doing. And with so that. now you're just gonna go, you're gonna do like what rehab, mobility. Yeah, so I mean, I mean, I guess uh, <clears throat> what and I, you know, I also want to say something that I, I, I know that I talk a lot of shit about Instagram and YouTube people and just in general because there's so many goddamn trolls and yeah. it just drives us crazy. So that, but I have to say that this whole process of me going through and documenting this the engagement that i've had on the youtube channel and the engagement on my instagram has been like 95 percent really positive and supportive and I, I have to be honest i've really brought it on myself to get bring the trolls like i've done a lot of stupid shit in the last three months that i've opened myself up for you know you could probably talk some shit on me and i deserve it mm. Uh, but I, surprisingly I've seen an overwhelming amount of support and positive people. Uh, and so, you know, and I just communicated last night, I said, you know, like this is uh, obviously a lot of ego. This was me trying to impress everybody and show you how much muscle I can build in such a short period of time and how I could get ripped in this. And like, you know, and if I was me training my client, I would be talking me out of that, you know, idea and going, Hey, we need to really bolster everything and really make sure that we're training in different planes. And so that being said, are you going to have, mm. you should have one of our trainers walk you through rehab so you don't get caught up in your own. So I actually sent, I sent Kyle uh, this morning, the protocol from Dr. Brink and, and actually asked him if he would be open to uh, basically being another pair of eyes on me. Coaching you through them. Yeah. Saying. And coaching me through the movements because I, I mean, even though I can do them on my own and I will at home and stuff like that, you know, I, I really would like another professional eye who's telling me like, Oh no, extend your hip more or no flex your toes. Like, yeah. because he can be looking at, the way I'm moving That's and then good. communicating oh, yeah. to me to, so yeah. I can connect that feedback That's of what good. I feel and what he's seeing. And so, yeah, no, I've asked him to come on the, so we'll see if he'll come That's on good. the channel with me and do that. I, I got to tell you guys about um, a study that is coming out that came out on creatine. So creatine, we, you know, we've talked about creatine for 10 years and how great it is. Um, and it's a longevity supplement. It's great for your brain. It's great for pretty much every organ of the body. Of course, build muscle, all that stuff. Yeah. Um, it's also a great sleep supplement. They, what? Yeah, they did a supplement. They did a study where they gave women five grams of creatine a day, um, and they were able to get better sleep than the placebo group. I would love to try what? and guess what repair, huh. replenishing ATP and ADP has to do with a better. Just take a step back, right? If if you have more of the available. Intercept. The main source of fuel and energy that your right. your body needs to function, yeah. right? all of your functions are going to improve. Oh, okay, so basically yeah. what you're saying is that okay, if you're deficient and then you all of a sudden now you're adding that in, it's going to make a big difference. Yes, and especially if you train. So these are exercise. These are women who worked out. 
And uh, I think it probably like allowed them to recover cramping. better. Yeah. 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 yeah well, that, that, that makes stuff. sense to me. That makes sense because from a recovery standpoint, it's less work the body has to do because it's getting assistant there, which would all would ultimately would mean you would get better, yeah. better sleep. Dude, that requires energy, right? Yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, again, think about it this way. Interesting though. Think about every cell in the body, right? Every cell in the body has a different function. Brain cells do a particular thing. Your pancreas cells do a particular thing. Muscle <clears throat> cells. All of these cells, all of them run on ATP. Yeah. If all of them have more of this readily available energy, whatever they do, they'll be able to do better. Right. So again, this is, I, I bet you, you could test anything with creatine and you'll see an improvement <laughs> because it allows the body to function more optimally across the board. Yeah. And they're going to keep finding this. It's just funny. All the, all these benefits that just keep, I up. wish, I wish we went back 10 years ago and pulled up some of those old episodes where I was saying creatine is going to be the, like the, they're going to put it in people's <laughs> oh, water, I know, I know. you know, and people were laughing like, yeah, what right. weird, like I just remember all the information I got from my coaches when it first came out. Like it was like the new steroids yeah, to yeah. avoid. <laughs> You yeah. know, this is like totally harmful. Yeah, I remember being completely cold. wrong. So remember when we were taking Celtech when Celtech was oh, the, yeah. the, the source of creatine? Oh, God, that gives people diabetes. Old, oh, oh, and Holy I remember shit. the big <laughs> fear. <laughs> there was people dropping studies back then that were saying that it, your your body didn't process and get rid of all of it and so that you were just piling up all this these mounds this mounds of creatine oh. in your gut. I remember, oh I remember being told that. What? It'd be like... Oh shit, that's like really yeah, can't be good. That's not good. <laughs> All scared. Yeah. I, I mean, like anything, right? When something's new, and I remember when it was new, like the the fear mongering that goes oh, yeah. around it. I mean, we have that right now with uh, you know, the the semi glutide right now, the GLP one. Well, well, I mean, granted, that's totally different. Uh, I mean, they are. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah obviously they are. But I mean the same the same abused. reaction that you yeah. get from trainers is you either adopt oh, something yeah, yeah. or you're somebody who's like decides they're going to put drugs the immediate heels sort of reaction. You brought, you brought up cell tech. I just got nauseous. That was the first time I'd ever <laughs> taken a supplement. And well, not first time. One of the, one of the times I got, and I got nauseous. I didn't know why it was 75 grams of, Dextrose, Dextrose. Yes. seventy-five grams in one they shot. Used to mess me up, yeah. Oh my god! I and five it. grams of creatine. <laughs> what a I waste! Love, I love it. You know, it was because it tasted like fruit punch. Well, it's yeah. also one of the first things that put weight on me. You well, know, yeah, I, strug I struggle with weight so much trying to put weight on, and it's like five hundred calories of sugar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, and of course, my brain at that time is not putting that. It's just no. like I'm thinking, like, oh, the scale goes up, so I'm yeah. excited. Never, never mind that I'm probably eating five hundred calories of sugar extra every day. My so. first creatine supplement was phosphagen so the eas put out i thought a, that came after cell no there was phosphagen and then phosphagen was eas's supplement and it was basically a, a meal replacement with creatine in it is the meal replacement category still as popular as it was i feel like that went out of favor for a while it's like. either protein because yeah, it's all protein now. protein shakes yeah weight gainers are gone yeah uh, although yeah the weight gainers they still, make some, they still make meal replacements it's just yeah. not as common you're right it's yeah. normally just a, a protein they push those a lot i bought a car yeah. i bought a you know what's funny to me the supplement that i find most interesting I can see some value for certain athletes, but for most people, I understand. I don't understand carbohydrate replacement drinks. I don't get that. Yeah, you can, like you can't get carbohydrates. Yeah, that's how you get everywhere. Yeah, well, if you're if you're a gainer, if you're trying to if you're trying to gain, yeah. But I mean, I agree too because I've always told people I would rather give me a, a pure way and I'll blend up an awesome flavor, yeah. great high calorie shake by adding Nutella, peanut butter, totally. banana. Like I'll make a, oh, you a bomb weight gain. Like, I get it if you're like an endurance athlete and you're on a run and you need to replay. Like that makes sense. But well, like the little gel packs and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. I actually saw like when I worked marathon. out in Austin, I needed something to drink. I didn't have any water. All they had. Were these carb drinks? And I'm like, I'd, I'd, I'll just I'll drink a soda. I'd rather have a soda. But anyway, I did it anyway. Dude, you know what I did? And I read the back, and it's trying to sell me on the science. Our carbohydrates are fastest absorbed. I'm like, oh my god. Do you know what you know what I did the other day? That uh, um, I, you could probably do it. You won't do it because of the the dairy and stuff like that. But this was, I thought, oh my god, how did I not like hack into this before? So you guys have seen like almost every day I eat those, what's Okios or how do you say it? Oikos. 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 <laughs> fucking say it right. Oikos. You're never going to say it right. I'm never going to say it right. It's already, <laughs> it's 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 already ingrained the wrong way. So you need it's a Greek are person they, here. To, are they, they, they they're not sponsored. I don't know. As far as I know, they're not sponsoring the show right now. So I really don't give a shit about pronouncing it right. So whatever. <laughs> well, now they never so, will. <laughs> so yeah, supposedly they want some influencer chick. So fuck it. You know what I'm saying? No way, right. Yeah, I'm going to say their name however I feel like it. So, So anyways... Uh, you know, they, they have these, uh, they have like a 12 gram, a 15 gram and a 20 gram, 
uh, you know, yogurt. little Greek yogurt. Yeah. You were reading it on the back of it, and it's because they add, they add whey to it. They add whey. So, like, I had this, like, aha moment of, like, oh, so I have some of these, like, 15-gram ones and 12 grams left over. So I put you two of them there. Put some I put in there? the vanilla whey inside yeah. there. Holy shit. It tastes good. Amazing. The, the sweetness. Okay, so you know how Greek yogurt kind of has a little bit of a tarty yeah, taste? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The protein powder, because it's so sweet, sweetens that up. And, bro, it's like I'm eating, like, whipped cream. Throw some blueberries and a little bit of granola in there. And I can't, I, like, yeah. I don't think I would ever drink a protein shake ever again. You I'll just, just mix it in Greek yogurt. a new category. Wow. Way, way better. Wow. And it mixes so good in there, and it makes the Greek yogurt taste even better. Wow. Huh. Yeah. You know I, what I used to mix? Yeah, like, this whole time, that. like, I never, it never dawned on me until you made that comment. You're like, oh, they're just, they're just boosting it with some yeah. whey. And I'm like, I guess I've never thought to just add a scoop of whey to my you can, Greek you yogurt. You can add whey to anything, by the way. I know. <laughs> I mean, and I pretty much do. It on your pizza? That's why yeah, I thought it was that. so interesting that I never had tested that because it's like that does seem like it would probably go good together. Why have I never tried to to do that? I've just ate bigger servings of Greek I think yogurt. I think we're entering into the era of protein boosting. Yeah, everything. it's like protein ice cream. Yeah, everything's protein, protein everything. which I actually think is a good thing. I think that I it's, know. I think it's, when I go back to all my clients, ninety nine percent. Didn't I don't care male or female doesn't matter the goal almost always under eight protein. Here's why I think it's neutral. That's why I won't say it's a good thing because the average oh, person, the average person is going to simply get the message that more protein's better. And they're not going to change their eating habits, and instead of getting the candy bar, they're going to get the candy bar with the extra protein. Instead mm -hmm. of getting this this one, they're going to get that one, and they're just going to eat more as a result. So I don't know if it's necessarily. A good oh, thing. interesting. I'm I'm curious to. Uh, Do okay, you think they'll get more calories that way or less? You yeah. know, processed you protein because it doesn't have the same appetite satiating effect. Oh, uh, yeah. It just I doesn't. Suppose. You know, drink a 30 gram whey shake. It's not like I mean, I'm going to take the I'm going to take the position that it's 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 net positive because maybe the fact that there's awareness around it. I mean, I think that yeah. that was something I had to communicate to every single client. Yeah. So it was nobody was aware of it. I feel like we've been screaming it from the mountaintops on yeah. here. More people are becoming obviously more people become aware of it because Snickers yeah. is making 20 gram Snickers bars yeah. now. Well, if you know they're not going to get so, rid of it, you know, and they're just doing the old switcheroo. It's like, I, I don't but at know. least you, at least you're cognizant yeah. of I'm better. not getting enough protein. I need to eat more protein. And so I you think what that's a, a net protein? positive. What? Meat lovers pizza. Tons. You ever look at the? <laughs> yeah, I'm serious. Do you look at the macro? No, it's brand? not. It's no, it doesn't. Meat lovers pizza. It does not have a lot of so protein. much protein. No, you're wrong, dude. So much. No, for the no you're scratching way. Scratching my itch. Wait, yeah. wait, you get like uh, 60 grams of protein if you eat a whole large pizza. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's, a, that's not a lot Bacon. of protein. Bro. Sausage. Pepperoni. That, that was that's 15 year old yeah. me, bro. Yeah. Trying to gain muscle. No, that's how I. You know, I used to eat the the chef board oh, yeah, can of ravioli that. because oh. I did the math and I was like, oh, there's like 75 you know, grams that of hurts protein. My heart in two different ways. Like, Only 4,000 calories it's to get unhealthy, there. Unhealthy. That hurts my heart. Then it's it's chef board That hurts my Italian heart. Uh, just oh, uh, what are you doing with that? It's not even a real chef. No. <laughs> is he made up? Is he a made up character? I, I mean, looked at this. Did His we? real name was Bugliardi, and then they changed it to they spelled it so the average person could say it to Bugliardi. But it's Bouillard. It was an Italian guy. So he was a real oh, so Italian a real chef. Guy? He was, but it ain't. Come on, bro. It ain't real. I mean, obviously they they took it and they turned it into a product. I mean, I bet you that they ran at one, one point he was yeah. making that with his family in his house, and then we we, we commercialized it, and we yeah. you know what I'm saying made it crazy. But <laughs> yeah. so I'm sure it was founded like tomato on, soup now with some pasta stuff. Oh, it's yeah. overcooked. Oh, god, yeah. it's it, terrible. It, I'm gonna start crying. Right I see spaghettios. Huh? Yeah. Did you really? Oh yeah. Spaghettios? Yeah, then you put like hot dogs in it. I, I mean, oh my God. I didn't oh, eat very well. That's the most Growing white thing I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Did you eat white? You hot, hot dogs and spaghettios? Hot dogs and spaghettios, bro. Oh my God. Oh. <laughs> Dude, my dad still eats shit like that. Dude. No, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. Does. No, he doesn't. Your dad eats hot dogs and spaghettios still? Yeah, or, or in the you, you know those <laughs> Vienna sausages. Yes, with the little, like he he eats right out of the can and like Ugh. he's like a can. Eat. I don't know if it's because he he's in the military. Yeah, and just like for used sure. to that for sure. But he always eats stuff out of the can. It always grossed me out. Well, I mean, I, I like, like spam. spam and everything. Good. You I like, like spam? I do. I don't know why. Yeah, that's weird. I don't know why I Some like people, it. yeah. I mean, you can eat the canned sardines. I still spam. have yet to try but that. But that's real, though. That's a fish. That's yeah. a real deal thing. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. Spam, what the hell is that? Sp Rob, I, I can't get over spaghetti and no hot idea. dogs. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> that's fucking awesome. That's gotta be, it's <laughs> embarrassing. Yeah, it's gotta uh, be. <laughs> invite a date over. Yeah. I did a lot of things with easy dinner. cheese that I wasn't, uh, you know, what, hey, what is? Hey, what's the grossest thing you probably made? It. Did you ever make a chick some dinner like that? That was like a- Made a girl dinner? Yeah, yeah. Like a dinner like that? I know what I've done before. That's probably not- 
<laughs> What'd you do? Chili cheese dogs. You know what I'm saying? You made, that? Made, oh, you made yeah, yeah, I, made, I, I make a mean chili cheese dog, bro. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I just want to see you eat it. <laughs> did I ever tell you that? I did that to Kitchen and his family. Yeah, you oh, did. they were so mad. Oh, yeah, yeah. They were so I mad. Because, and I thought I was like, oh, they're going to love this because at that time I was like, peak was competing yeah. and, you know, the whole so family. You just want to take him for a loop. Oh, bro, the whole family was like, I mean, imagine, I'm. Uh, this is early in our relationship. So I'm like the new guy in the family. And, you this know, is your first attempt to win them over. Yes, <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, you know, every time I show up to dinner at their family events, of that, I got my own Tupperware. You know what I'm saying? I'm not eating yeah. anybody's food. So of course, you know, they're judging on the yeah. other side. It's like, oh, this guy can't even eat our food, and who's he think he is? You know, yeah. it's got to be the attitude, us. right? Yeah. For sure, that's the attitude. So like, one of our first, you like, like to say bye to people. When you yeah, eat. Oh, yeah, yeah, Irish, bro. Irish the goodbye all the time the too. Irish goodbye. Leaving Dude, my I plastic Tupperware, I'm out. You know what I'm saying? No wonder their brothers. He does a smoke bomb and just. Hey, sorry to interrupt. We have a free guide titled Understanding Your Mood, Stress, and Sleep. It tackles all of those things from a health and longevity perspective. It's a totally, totally free guide. So just click on the link at the top of the description below. So we, I, I've been doing that forever. Uh, I'm done competing at this point. And we have our Christmas, we're, we're heading up to Tahoe. And what Chris, uh, Katrina's family does really well that I love and that I've tried to pass on to all my friends and other family traditions is that when we go, we go to these houses with, with a, a lot of family is we, before we go on the trip, it's like you have a night of cooking and cleaning. Like everybody has that. And it's so nice because with that many people, you are only responsible for like one meal that's the only time you got to clean. That's the only time you got to cook. And then the house always stays clean. Yeah, it's always cooked for cool So system. it's a great strategy, right? So anyways, uh, you know, my turn, I'm going to do it. And I know they're all thinking, oh, chicken breasts and rice yeah. is what we're getting. And I'm just like, no, I'm going to drop my chili cheese dogs. Is my, that's my like thing. Everybody was so disappointed, dude. I was so Everybody heartbroken. That heartburn and this diarrhea. This is like one of those things that I, I get, like I used to make when I was younger that I, you know, I used to Thanks, love the kid. And everybody was so shitting all over. I was like, that did not literally, land. They literally were shitting yeah. <laughs> from that. Hey, speaking of food yeah. and stuff, I tell you what, dude, the, the gummy trap trend with supplements. Oh, it's going crazy hey, now. Listen, it's, it's going crazy. Listen, we have We've been here, hyping it up a lot. We have in here three packets of gummy type supplements from Organifi. We have the Better Biome, yeah. Happy Drops over there. We have the Shilajit. We're, yeah, we got pouches all over the place. Listen, I take them so consistently. Now, I'm a supplement taker. Don't get me wrong. I'll take supplements all the time. But I don't think to myself, I'm going to take Happy Drops. I'm like, I just see gummy. <laughs> and I'm like, I'll have a couple of those delicious gummies. <laughs> it's so smart. Nom, 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 nom. It's so smart. We've already predicted this. I, th I think the supplement industry, so many supplements are going to move in that direction. I think it's- Because people are going to take them. I find it more interesting. Because that's the biggest problem to solve. It's can, more interesting yeah. to me because there's, a, there's already studies to show, like we've talked about this before. There's a study that shows you're more likely to give your dog his pills than yourself. Yes. So like, it's it's a fact. That's a big problem. It's yeah. a, you know, it's a well- well-known fact yes. is adherence. That's yes. like one, like that's like one With of the hardest medicine, let alone supplements. Yes. Yeah. So the fact that we've known that forever, and we're just like the the industry is just now hacking into. Why don't we just make everything gummies yeah. and taste cool? Can we do something with fish oil pills? Like, uh, you can get fish uh, oil there, gummies. No, there isn't. I've had them before. No, they're not. Ooh, yeah, no, it doesn't taste like fish. It doesn't taste like fish. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look it up. Is there really fish oil? Yeah, gummies? I give them to my kids. No. Oh, way. really? Yeah, I do. Oh, no wow. shit. Yeah, I give them a, I give them an omega three and a choline. They did the impossible supplement. By hey, speaking of which, I gave I gave my daughter. So my daughter can't eat eggs. She gets a little eczema, and which sucks because eggs are such a great source of choline, which is good for your brain. Yeah. So I found supplements that were gummies. With Look at that and, fish oil uh, gummies. Yeah, and I no gave it to her. No way, dude. But I, I could tell my daughter's cognition improve. From huh. giving her that. Mm -hmm. I did not know that. Yeah, because oh. I'm still like, you know, you burp it up. You're like, oh, my God. Oh, I hate that. Freeze I'm going to I'm gonna buy that. I'm totally going to. Yeah. You know, we should tell uh, Drew to get on that. Yeah. Because yeah. fish oil is like a top supplement that people use. You know what them. supplement of all the gummy ones is crushing the most is the Shilajit? I, uh, yeah. Destroying it. So that that's to me, the one I get asked the most. Okay. People are just interested, like they haven't heard of it it's, before. Yes, yeah. it's the market timing right now. Yeah. It when Drew first dropped, I didn't even know what the hell that was. Yeah. Which is funny. Now I knew you, knew, is a you knew what it was because yeah. you're you're familiar with uh, Eastern medicine stuff yeah. and all yeah. that shit, right? So they 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 were familiar to you. Everybody else, I don't know anybody else that knew what that was. And then all of a sudden, I start seeing all kinds of other brands doing. Yep. So I think part of it, Justin, is just the hype behind it. Yeah. And imagine you're a consumer because I'm getting my I'm getting so many family members that are messaging me like, "Hey, is that she oh, yeah. the real deal?" Like, because no, I get a lot. Of they're not just seeing our commercial and ad for it; they're seeing all these other brands. Because it seems up. exotic. Yeah. Well, it does have a lot of data supporting it. 
I mean, it really does. You you look it up yourself. Look up the studies on it. It does raise testosterone if your testosterone is low. It does have anti-inflammatory effects. It does have immune boosting effects. It does have cognitive boosting effects. And it's been around for a long time. Personally, I feel the happy drops more than I feel this. Well, you are going to feel happy drops more. Oh, you should. Is that is there a reason? Yes, the the saffron in there acts like an SSRI. If you take that four days in a row, you're going to have more serotonin in your brain. Oh, yeah. So you'll feel it. Oh, so that sure. makes sense to me because uh-huh. I feel like I can really I can tell a difference. In yeah, that, right. Yeah, you're yeah. way Those easier to be around. <laughs> That's why we're always feeding them to you. <laughs> That's the more. I mean, Sal did that to me this morning. This morning, I gave a whole bunch. Uh, he was so mad this morning. What dude, happened? I just have a lot of things I'm like, like juggling right now. Okay. I'm like a lot of stress of, of different uh, moving parts and, you know, my car and everything else. So I, it was just like all this kind of culmination. Like, I, I again, I'm not good at like, hey, guys, here's what's happening, communicating no, no. and like getting out we with it all. We know you long enough now, though, we can see it. Like, I just, just did, get, you know, gets that point. Where, <laughs> yeah. ah, like, he, almost, <laughs> he almost broke his mic because yes. it wasn't folding properly. Yeah. I wasn't getting, like, it wasn't it wasn't responding the way I wanted it to. So <laughs> yeah, I was, dude, like, I was like, fuck give him some happy up. drops it's, quick before he, yeah, he breaks but, something. Yeah, that's why I have a punching bag at home, dude. I just, you know. That's <laughs> just, my therapy. You just let it out. Okay. Dude, oh, you were such a, a, a bull in a China home. So yeah. it's so so funny watching yeah. my, you. My oh, I got to tell you guys, my uh, my my. She's almost two now. My daughter Dahlia. She just my wife sends me a video this uh, this morning. She's she now figured out how to put her socks on by herself. It's cute because you know you think putting your socks on, but to a little kid, it's such a big deal. Oh, yeah. So she's like sitting there and she'll. She's very independent. It's funny, you know, every kid's a little different. And all kids go through this stage where they're like, I do it on myself. I do it myself. Leave me alone. She's like fiercely, fiercely independent. Like, That's no, super cool. No, I'll do it. So it's like, yeah. you know, 20 minutes. It's going to take her to put her socks on. We're going to have to wait here for 20 yeah, minutes. Yeah. But she was so happy after she did it. She's like, yay. So she's sending me videos of it. I'd say That's probably one of the things as an, uh, an older dad great trait. that uh, that I'm aware of that I I'm always trying to be better. I don't yeah. think I'm perfect, but I'm always trying to be better at that. That probably younger me doesn't realize the consequences of not like, you know, you're trying to get your kid ready for school in the morning yeah. or you got to be something like that. It's really easy to want to just take control of that situation yeah. and get them out the door, but you're also robbing them of that I'm ability t- hey, and listen, independence I'm to I'm be able to do that. Right I just pick them up, put them in the car. You're going to fish it in the car. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm going to tell you something, dude. I tell the parents listening right now, like I have two, I have four kids, but my two, I have two that are older and two that are younger. So I have the unique opportunity of experiencing that, of, of going through it when I was young and then going through it again when I was older. Yeah. And, and, and I'll tell Patience you something. Patience wins. The stuff that you rush when they're little, that you're trying to get them to do this and do that and whatever, is this, it, first of all, it doesn't last forever. It goes away. Yeah. And that's the stuff you this miss. This is all developmental. Yeah, like if your kid comes into your bed in the middle of the night and it kind of messes your sleep up and they do this every single night and they're two years old, mm-hmm. They're, they're not going to do that forever. And then when they stop doing it, you're going to look, think back and be like, oh, I remember when they used to come into bed yeah, yeah, and yeah. want to cuddle. Oh, I miss that so much. So when it happens and you feel like this is disrupting my whatever, like it's going to end and yeah. you will miss it. You yeah. will miss it. So like totally soak it in. And I think that's, that is like, that's the older, wiser version of you where 25 year old you who's like thinking about tomorrow all the time is not thinking about those no. things where I think that's one of the the perks of being older dad is, is I recognize that stuff and I still catch myself. There's times where yep. we're getting ready to head out the door and I see him fumbling around with his shit or his shoes are on back with the wrong feet. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, give them to me. And I'm like, wait a second. I'm in no hurry right now. It's like, whatever. We're going to the mailbox. Like yeah. this takes 20 minutes to get this done. It's like, no, 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 take him off. This is the other foot. Like let him figure it out. Let him do that. Like the value of that is so much greater. And also to your point, cause I'm not, I, there's value in the independence and them learning and teaching them themselves yep. is really really important then there's also what you're bringing up which is just the value of like appreciating those moments right because they will go away and you're like oh man i remember when he used to put his feet on his shoes on yeah. backwards you know like, I, I mean well, it when they're teenagers you gotta light a fire under their ass yeah, dude. you get up yeah teenagers yeah, they will abuse <laughs> they will <laughs> that, that patience and, and they also get the you know, there's an age when they just they just you know, because they're doing stuff with their friends or they're doing other stuff. They just don't want to hang out with you uh, like they did when they were little. When they're little, you can't get them off you. And you just think to yourself, I just want some time to myself. Then they become teenagers. Yeah. And you go in the room, hey, we're going to put a movie on. No, I'm cool. Yeah, no, I'm fine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, fine. <laughs> what, what are you doing in here? Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> is this better? Do you, do you, do you, okay, because you're more close. He's been dealing with it for a lot longer. You're closer to that transition. Was there a clear moment in the where it was just like all of a sudden one day that happened? You're like, what the fuck? Yeah, like, what, what, I what, think. What did this happen? Yeah, we were out like in the living room, and we were we were all kind of like, yeah, family movie night, me, you know, and and we're like, where is Ethan? You know, where is he? And it was just like he was just super content to. You know, he was like working on something and then he's on his computer and all that. I'm like, hey, bud, we're going to watch the movie. He's like, yeah, I'm not interested in that. I'm just like, what? Yeah. <laughs> You're not interested in this. This is going to be amazing. Yeah. What the hell is happening in here? And I was like, so it was just like, yeah, I was perplexed. Yeah. Like, what? Uh, how so, old? Do you remember how old he was? How old was he? Yeah, he probably was probably recent. Not yeah, it was pretty ago. recent. It was probably like, yeah, when he was 13. Yeah. yeah, yeah, 13. yeah. Is, that when my, you, is that when you saw? Yeah, it's right around 13, 14. Around 14, 15, both of my kids, like my daughter's now kind of going through it. They go through like this, this kind of moody, you know, like, why are you like in a bad mood? You know, but, and I remember like, I remember when I was 14, 15, I think I was irritated a lot too. Your daughter's yeah. going through that. Like she's changing right now. Yeah. You sent a, you sent a picture over recently that you guys just took outside. Yeah. Uh, she's becoming a woman. Yeah. She looks like, I like, I look like I almost don't recognize her from just like recently seeing her. I'm like, it's so crazy. she's definitely in that stage of like where she's like yeah. really growing she up. She recently right? too. I'm so, she's such an, not to a fault. Like this is an area that I have to check with her, but she's so ambitious and just like hardcore she wanted to make the soccer team for her high school and she didn't play soccer a lot as a kid at all. And I'm like, oh, honey, you're probably going to get cut. Like these girls, I mean, you're freshmen. Like a lot of these girls have been playing forever, whatever. She got a soccer coach. She was busting her ass. She was going to the gym. Wow. She asked me to, she started taking creatine. She's like, you know, to, uh, you know, seeking out protein more than she normally does. She made the team. Well, so you said, awesome. totally made the team. Yeah. You said this it's a so while rad. back. It was not that long ago. Um, when you said that now that the two older ones are in their teens, you, you more and more you're realizing how much your daughter has a lot of your attributes yeah, yeah. that you didn't was you weren't sure of before. No. But now you're starting to see and, and, and manifest in different ways. Obviously, you weren't like the athlete, but yeah. her approach that's you. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. Your ability to focus myopically on something and say and set a yeah. goal and say I'm going to get good at this yeah. or I'm going to figure this out, mm -hmm. and she goes and does it. Like yeah. that's definitely your personality. For yeah. Sure. So I'm proud of that, but I'm also like, okay, well what's probably going to be good from this for her is she's going to get her butt kicked. She's going to get, you know, practice going to be tough for her. Uh -huh. She's, you know, there's going to be girls that are better than her. They're going to lose, uh, you know, and hope, I hope that happens not because I want her to suffer, but because these are good opportunities for her to learn Great how lessons. to. Yeah, dude, because right now she's got this attitude, like I will do it and I can do it if I put my head to it, you know, and I had that attitude forever. Um, and that serves you until you get kicked in the face and then it's a hard realization. So, yeah. you know, I want her to, be okay with like bust your ass definitely and apply yourself, but don't be like my whole world has ended now because it didn't you know work out the way I wanted it. So we were just talking about how kids when you look at like uh, we're, we're talking about little kids putting shoes and socks on and and not like you know being stepping in and taking over that. Do you guys see that with teenagers too? Is there is there moments where you are reluctant to do that, or do you feel like there's so much of that they don't want you to be involved that you have to insert? Like what's Ho homework? For sure, is okay. one uh, because yeah, there was a crutch to kind of constantly come find mom or dad to like you know kind of work through and troubleshoot, and I'm like, you got to figure this out, dude. And it, that was tough because I do want to help, you know, but yeah. it's like you're not gonna learn it unless you like struggle, right? You know? If I just give you the answer to like how to do it, you got to figure out the answer. Yeah, and that, and then like I told you guys, like Ethan's really into um, being an entrepreneur right now, and like. You know, like where we are and like going back and two, we're like addressing uh, the trainers and coaches. So I'm like really like into, um, you know, placing myself back as like a brand new entrepreneur and like, you know, it's exciting. And like what he's doing and building is like exciting, even though it's like nothing mm -hmm. right now, you know, and he's like super hyped about it. But like um, I have to like I, I can't just like, OK, I'm going to do this to kind of float him in that direction keep it going keep stoking it uh it's more like he has to like learn hard lessons you know and he has to like okay this is a big investment the first time he 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 um he made some money uh doing chores and all the stuff he saved all his money and he actually had to like give me his money to then pay for the inventory you know and he was just like Ugh. he <laughs> felt that you know yeah, and i yeah. was like part of the business it's real yeah yeah this money that you, i know he worked for this money this is a real thing this yeah. is a commitment and this is an investment in your idea and 
I'm like, it's not, it's probably not going to work out, yeah. <laughs> you know, but that's okay. Good for you though, because it's real, you're in a position, obviously that you could fund that and just fund it. But then what lesson does he learn in that? Like Nothing. if he's not, yeah. If you're the one who goes ahead and like, I'll buy that for you, son, help you out. It's like, no, I can help you out in other yeah. ways. It's, it's hard like, as a parent. If you don't want you to see, see your kid go through pain, that's when it's, this when it steps up. Like, oh, yeah. I want to step in. I don't want to see them, you know, get hurt. It is a struggle. But if they don't, this is the part that helps me. If I have to think about this, because sometimes I'm in the moment, and, and, and I, but if I back out, I remember they'll either learn the lesson now when the stakes are not that high right, or, or they're going to learn it later yeah. when the stakes are really high. Like learning how to manage your money when you're a kid and mm -hmm. you're starting a, your business and you live with mom and dad and you're 15 and you fail. Okay. You lost a couple hundred bucks and big deal. Learning that later when you're, you have a bloated sense of self and that you're, you know, you're going out and then all of a sudden now you can't make rent and what do I do? Like, that's a whole different. That's, I mean, that's the message that's been reiterating to him. It's yeah. like, this is perfect. I'm so glad you're passionate about this now. I wish I was at your age because you can get through all these mistakes. I was like, it, right now it's, it's all the reps of failure. It's failure reps. I'm, yeah. How so, many can you get? I'm so pumped that he's doing that with you. I think that's yeah. probably the only thing that could excite me more than Max getting into like basketball or You know what your struggle would be? Your yeah. struggle, probably the same struggle Justin or I would have, is that because you because you you have so much to teach because yes. you'd want to, yes. no, 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 do this. This will be better. Yeah. This will be more effective. Yes, so much knowledge Except pass, you gotta, you probably need to sit back and be like, sure. and just ask questions. Oh, yeah, you yeah. think that'll be better? I mean, Knowing that's, why, like, that's a terrible idea. I mean, that's why I yeah. brought that up because I mean, it's it literally is the same kind of advice, right? It's no, it's no longer putting your socks and shoes on. Now it's problem solving, critical thinking, yeah. right? And it's like, there's going to be a part of me that wants to insert myself, put the socks on, put the shoes on, or come in there, solve the problem. But the best thing I can possibly do is sit back and allow him to try to figure it out himself. I mean, it's like, I'm getting a good practice of that right now. You guys know off air, I've shared it with you with my brother and stuff like that. My brother and I have a kind of parental relationship. Both He's my, so much younger than you. Yeah, because they're so much younger, and I had a lot to do with their raising. And so one of the hardest things as an adult brother uh is to is to transition to being just a brother and not be that and so there's times and 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 because of that we've really driven a stake in our brotherly relation and this accounts for also my sister who's really young uh too is that you know they don't they don't call me when they have they need brotherly or family advice because they know they're going to get the parental dad yeah. side of me and so i've had to really train myself to not be that guy. I mean, I'm dealing with it right now with my brother where there's like a thing that he just did and I'm just like, I want to grab him and just like, you know, and I'm like, let's see how we can figure this out. And I'm, you know, playing, <laughs> but inside I'm just, it's so hard though, yeah. you know? And so yeah. I know it's going to be similar like that with your son where, you know, you're going to have this thing where you just want to tell him because he's your son and so that, but I know that I have to like step back. Again, this is more, you know, being older and seeing that two, three steps out ahead of time where if I was 25, I just wouldn't have the wisdom. Sometimes to kids that. are yep. smart too. Like I, we were, we were at the, this church event and there were, there's kids selling, um, uh, like popcorn and drinks and stuff like that. And it was cheap. It was like three bucks or whatever, but they didn't have any change. And I, I was, as, as I'm giving them a 20, like, Oh, sorry, we don't have any change. And I'm like looking at them like you little sh the change and i'm watching every single person in line <laughs> give them a 20 not have change say you could keep it because it's funding their trip yeah and i looked at them like did you guys plan this to like no I'm like right yeah dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah brilliant move by the way <laughs> <laughs> this is for our trip to wherever yeah. you know what yeah, i mean that's hilarious funny. that's yeah, so good. good stuff so shout out uh i got a shout out I shout wanna, out brink you yeah, said yeah right? yeah i want to shout out i know we've talked and we've had dr brink on here it's been a long time he's the he's most influential correctional exercise specialist for us He's period the best in the biz. Yeah. He uh, he moved to Eagle, Idaho, which is one of my favorite places in the country, uh, a couple years back. And so um, it's sad that I don't get to see him as much because typically what would happen when I do stupid stuff like I've been doing lately to myself, <laughs> he's the guy I drive over and and say, bro, fix me up. Tell me, what, tell me talk some sense into give me. me the tell plan. me the plan. Yeah, give me the plan. Tell me, and he's done that again for me with uh, what I got going on. So he's the one who's really guided me through this rehab process. Um, and, uh, you just incredible. So if you're in, he does virtual stuff too, by the way, which I actually didn't know that till a while back. And I was like, Oh my God, I've always got people that ask. And I don't, I don't, didn't realize that I could send them to you virtually. So you can, and you can find them on Instagram, uh, under premier sport and spine and it's premier underscore sport underscore spine. Is that correct? Actually premier underscore spine underscore sport. So no, premier, no, I said premier spine. No, you said it sport. backwards. Oh, oh, yeah, oh, the yeah. Sport first. oh, 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 um, so yeah. So he and incredible, just brilliant, um, brilliant, brilliant friend of ours. And give him a follow. And if you guys have questions about like movement and rehab, I mean, he's he's go to, he's my go to for sure.
Hey, real quick, there's a company called Joy Mode that makes a supplement that boosts something called nitric oxide. All right, what is nitric oxide, dude? It relaxes your blood vessels and improves blood flow to all the important areas. Joy Mode is great before workouts. It's also great before sex. Yes, before sex, it does improve erection quality. Anyway, go check them out. Try it out. See for yourself. Go to tryjoymode.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code mind pump at checkout. Get 20% off. All right, back to the show. First question is from James Martin. So five, how do you know if you're doing enough cardio to kill muscle gains? Oh, I'd say there's probably two general, cause it's so individual. Okay. But there's probably two general ways you could judge this. One is, is the cardio stressing you so much that you're not able to recover and adapt from your strength training. And that's a, a very individual thing. Uh, the second would be, are you spending more time doing cardio than strength training? In yeah. other words, is that the signal you're sending more often than the build so muscle? The there's a third and fourth also. What are they? So the third and fourth would be there's a there's a major genetic variance because I've seen firsthand somebody who defies a lot of the rules that we would we would have and they just their body just holds on the muscle. They yeah. just don't lose it. I know a lot of athletes like that. Yeah, so do mm -hmm. I. And and seen it firsthand. And I've seen it in both sexes, male and female. There's just genetically some know. people hang on to muscle really, really well. And it doesn't matter how much they run. Uh, but th those people seem to also be the people that have a hard time just losing weight or losing fat too. It's like they have to do a lot for their body to be catabolic. Uh, and then the other factor is also what's going on nutritionally with you. So if you're doing cardio and you're also in a caloric deficit, yeah. uh, that will send a very loud signal that we don't need or we don't want all this muscle because a, a muscle is an expensive tissue and if you are calorie deprived and you're doing cardio, that adds a whole nother, uh, you know, it compounds the likelihood that you will pare down muscle. So uh, being in a surplus, in addition to the things that Sal said, uh, is also a benefit. One of the ways that I would try, like when I was playing basketball and also trying to build muscle, I would try to mitigate some of that is pre going into playing basketball, I would slam a high calorie drink before and then right after I would slam another high calorie drink afterwards so that I'm at least supplying my body with enough quick resources and fuel to help propel myself through that high intensity activity so I it would mitigate some of the muscle loss even though it was inevitable to be playing that much basketball I'm going to pare down some, some muscle and so if you are doing all those things in conjunction with also being in a calorie deficit that will exacerbate yeah, but the think situation. about it this way like there's cardio to build endurance uh and stamina in which case like train for that and then if you're just trying to do cardio for general activity and for health mm -hmm. walking and walking is very <clears throat> muscle building friendly. It's the most muscle building friendly, friendly form of quote unquote cardio. You're not going to build tons of stamina and endurance doing it because it's not very challenging. But if that's your goal, if your goal is to keep muscle, keep a fast metabolism and you like the way you look with that, uh, it, then walk, just walk a lot. It, it's very friendly for that. If you want stamina and endurance, well, now you got to train for it. Mm -hmm. And that means you're going to push yourself a little bit with your cardio and you may sacrifice some maximal strength and muscle along the way. But then again, your goal is stamina and endurance. And again, there's nothing wrong with that. So it just depends on what you're looking for. Next question is from Anesthesia Strength. I've always wondered why, if to maintain muscle, you need to do a lot less, like one seventh or one ninth of the volume. But then why do bodybuilding competitors always do so much volume in a prep to maintain their muscle? Wow. So there's a couple things that are happening here. <clears throat> one is bodybuilders notoriously do too much anyway. I was just going to say, we um, could also debate that they don't do it right. Yeah, so there's a, there's right. a lot going on there. Uh, but besides that, okay, when you, look, help. when you look at the data on how much strength training is required to maintain muscle versus how much is required to build it, they're looking at the average person and they're looking at average strength training. The more extreme you get with your performance, like you start to build a lot of muscle, you start to look more like a bodybuilder, you start to, your strength goals start to move up and now you're deadlifting two and a half times your body weight, you're squatting two times your body weight and you're really getting strong. Now you start to see the drop in strength and muscle happen faster when you reduce the volume. This is with any type of performance. As the performance gets more extreme, the more it gets affected by changes in your training and your volume. But if you're the average person, you're strength training two or three days a week, you're building muscle through that process, and then you go to once a week for a while, you're probably not going to lose any muscle. But if you've built a physique that looks like, wow, people really take notice, uh, it's more effective, and it's just, effective. It's just because you're more on the extreme 
side of the scale. That's all. I mean, I, I also wondered this when I was competing. I remember seeing the the amount of intensity that was applied to cardio in a cut, the amount of volume and intensity that was applied to their strength training during a cut, like for shows. With but This is me like watching my peers. There was a, a time <clears throat> in, in my competing career when – uh, I worked out at a gym when at all times there was anywhere between five to 10 other like competitors. So you could always kind of see what everybody was doing. And it always fascinated me, like the, the approach that a lot of them had, because I knew that I didn't need to do nearly as much work uh, as, as I did in the building phase. Cause I was in a calorie deficit and at that point. My philosophy was always uh, the real work is done in the off season in building the physique and building the muscle in a calorie surplus. Once I go to a, a cal calorie deficit, I'm just, carving away the hard work that I've ever done. I'm not going to be building any muscle. So why would I be trying to hit PRs and adding volume at a time like that? I want to just do what I need to, to maintain the muscle. There's also the other factor that a lot of these, the people that we're talking about right now are on tons of pharmaceuticals. So there's a lot of rules that are bent a little bit, right? Like there, you could potentially in a cut, uh, if, if leading into a show actually might have actually build some muscle when you're on enough pharmaceuticals, that's possible uh, with somebody like with that that we're talking about right here, the average yeah. person that's not happening, right? If they spent more time on recovery. It'd be interesting to see, you know, how they could actually build more muscle with that. Versus, I think it's just the pharmaceutical option is there, and so it's like it, a lot of times it'll be, you know, like go back to that in terms of like adjusting the dose. You know, it's funny. There's so many it's examples so in, in the professional bodybuilding space of a bodybuilder suddenly gaining. These are advanced pro bodybuilders suddenly gaining 10 pounds of lean body mass. And everybody's going to say, oh, they, they added a new drug. No, no, no. They've used all, they're using all the drugs already. Typically what they do is they cut the volume. Yep, yep. And that's what they'll report back. Yeah. yeah I, right. you know, how did you gain an extra 10 pounds of muscle? Oh, I slept more, I ate more, and I reduced the training volume. It's mm -hmm. typically what happened. I mean, the most famous example of this was Dorian Yates, where he took second at the Olympia in 90, I don't remember what year it was, 96 to Haney. The next year he came back, those famous black and white photos where it looks like, oh my God, he looks like he gained so much more muscle. He went from more of a traditional training to what he called his blood and guts, which is severely less uh, um, volume, like way less volume and packed on like 15 pounds of, of muscle yeah. in his professional career. Yeah, yeah. It's early access to Black Friday, all MAPS programs, all bundles, 60% off. Also, if you get a bundle, you'll get 10 entries to win. If you buy a program, you'll get five entries to win. Everything else, one entry to win. Five days at the Mind Pump House in Park City. It's got a gym. It's got a cold dip. It's got a sauna. It's got red light therapy. It's all kinds of great stuff. Five-day vacation hooked up with $1,000 for travel accommodations as well. Early access, Black Friday. Go to mapsfitnessproducts.com and then use the code Black Friday for the 60% off and the entries to win uh, a vacation at the Mind Pump Park City House. All right, back to the show. Next question is from 27ZJK. <clears throat> How can you stay consistent in a calorie deficit when you struggle with binging at night? Mm. If you're binging at night, you're probably in too big of a deficit. Uh, now, of course, there's relationships with food that could get quite complicated. But for the most part, when this would happen with my clients, it was because their calorie deficit was too big and or we needed to move more of their food yeah, towards the evening. Calories at dinner. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because sometimes like they're busy during the day, then at night they can relax and hang out and then they start to want to eat more. So I had clients like this where if it wasn't too big of a deficit, what I did is I said, okay, let's keep the calories light during the day. You're busy anyway. Mm -hmm. When you get home, now you can eat more of your calories and they're like, oh, I'm not supposed to eat at night. I heard it's like, well, no, no, you're fine. So long as you don't eat right before you go to bed. Um, and that always, that almost always did the trick. So I have a way that I used to communicate this to my client, probably not the most scientifically accurate way of communicating it, but I'm going to share it with you because it worked really well and it's worked well for myself. I still play this psychological game with myself, which is when you are in a, in a cut calorie deficit, there becomes, a you're still eating food. You're just in a lower calorie. There comes a time when the body ends up tapping out on utilizing all that glycogen and then your body switches over to using fat as a source of fuel to propel your body through the rest of the day or the night. And so I would tell my clients that 
when you get that feeling of like hunger really kicking up, that's your body switching systems. That's your body going away from using. That's when you're burning fat. That's right. That's I, your, I used to say the same thing. And this is now your body starting to do that. So you're sitting there watching Netflix at night and you have that urge to go eat a big bag of popcorns or this. You're getting leaner. But you're getting leaner. You're getting leaner while you're watching <laughs> TV. How badass is that? And you could literally end that by going over and eating something. So, you know, white knuckle that shit and get through the night because you're going to burn body fat all there, night there long. Is some, there is some value to that. First off, it's a night. It's a psychological. It's if, from a psychological approach. It's awesome because now the person is connecting hunger. By the way, we don't like to feel hungry ever, yeah. even though it's a natural feeling. Yes. It's like we, we're taught to avoid it at all costs. It's a natural feeling. You're supposed to feel hungry sometimes. So it it is a way of attaching something positive to a feeling that normally we're afraid of. Mm -hmm. So it's like, oh my god, I'm hungry. What do I do? Oh, I'm burning body fat. Right. And then you start to kind don't of be panic. like, that's okay. I don't I don't mind this now. I'm happy because I'm burning body fat. I would say the same thing. It, it, Even though you're right, it isn't necessarily scientifically accurate. It isn't. I, and I know that I'm but I still play that same game with myself to this day. I mean, I'm I just came off of doing a cut. I'm in a lower calorie deficit right now I'm, and than I was previously, and I'm like, "Oh man, last night I was talking to you. I'm, ah, I'm so hungry." But I'm like in my head I'm going like, "Okay, I'm getting leaner right now. I'm getting leaner right now." That's what I'm telling myself. <laughs> and that helps Helps me do that and i know that i go like well i could go eat this but then now my body's going to use that as fuel it's definitely not tapping into fat at that point at that point it's going to switch over use that fuel as a resource versus if i can just tough it out go to bed right now then all night long my body's just going to be slowly burning body fat and so that has been a, a thing that i've said to clients forever and it's always helped them because to your point sal we are in this, like, we think that I had somebody on my live last night came in and just like, oh, I had to get out of my calorie deficit because I was hungry all the time and I was uh, in my workouts, I was getting weaker. And I said, well, hold on a second. I said, it, it's pretty normal if you've been in a calorie deficit for a while to see yourself get a little weaker. So it's not, it's very rare we increase strength or you can even maintain it when you're in a, a calorie deficit over a period of time. And it's very normal to have those moments of, man, I'm hungry. And so before you bail, on that and just think that you need yeah. to add a bunch more calories maybe it's okay and, and then i explain like you know how much you are you losing strength for how long that's how i dictate whether i would come out of that next question is from it's jesse bb how do i jump start my appetite it seems like i'm never hungry and most days i go without eating much how do i fix that the the, the most effective fix for this that i've ever had uh, or or used for clients <coughs> was workout programming if i had them strength like, train in a way. Singles. Yeah. You, oh yeah. That's the best. Like if I had them strength train in a way to where I could see them getting stronger, almost always their appetite would increase. And you hit the nail on the head, Justin, uh, low reps mm -hmm. are really good for people who don't eat a lot of calories. They don't burn a lot of calories. They don't require as much recovery. Yeah. They stimulate strength. And they seem to stimulate appetite really well. Almost every one of my clients would report back that, that they're hungry. They're, yeah, it increased their their hunger signal. So yeah. I also had a lot of success with actually just starting my morning off with something really light to kick that to get it going. Like I, this was a, this was me for a mm -hmm. really long time. I was for most of my life, at least into my twenties. Uh, I was which is no longer most of my life. I guess I can't say that anymore. That's weird. <laughs> it used to be <laughs> used to be most of my life. Third of your life. Yeah, yeah. Half of my life. It's halfway over. Easy, bro. a third guy. <laughs> yeah. Half of my life. Okay. You're die I, soon. <laughs> <laughs> I I didn't eat till noon or one. You know, and that was my first meal, and I just I had no appetite. So, and then here I I'm trying to build muscle and, and put body weight on as a as a young younger guy. And I obviously knew I needed to start eating right, but you there's, I don't care if you told me that steak, eggs and whatever is the best muscle building, uh, breakfast in the world. I ain't eating it. There's no way there was just, I didn't have the appetite. So I remember I used to start, I had, I started back then, which is not the ideal and I'm not suggesting this, but like, I was like, what can I eat that is like so low calorie? So I'll use those yo play whipped yogurts that were yeah. like 120 calories. And I would just, just eating that would stimulate the appetite. And then two hours later, I would actually want something real to yeah, eat. Yeah, you get a little blood sugar up, a little blood sugar down. That's right. And then it would kickstart that. So if you don't have an appetite in the, in the morning, start with something really light and at least eat something. And a lot of times you'll see in an hour, two hours later, you'll want to eat another. I'll, I'll tell you another. what though, MAPS Anabolic, yep. phase one, do the two day a week version. And you pair it with good workout. You will get you will get hungrier. Uh, that That is the appetite boosting, muscle building phase. Uh, of all the programs, that one seems to do the best uh, for people in this situation. So give it a shot. All right, I know you liked that episode. If you did, check this one out. 30% body fat. For men, this is way too high. This is actually a bit high for women as well. 
So in today's episode, we're talking about how you can go from 30 to 10. What is 10% body fat? This is when you have a visible six pack. Can you go from 30 to 10%? Yes, it's possible, but not if you guess along the way. So we're gonna talk about how you can do that in today's episode. Now there's a huge range, right, of like body types. Yes. Some people can run uh, a little bit heavier uh, and, or a little bit higher. Body